prova 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 audio Signori, rinnovo l'invito a sedervi, la cerimonia sta per cominciare, grazie. Buongiorno, buongiorno a tutti. Diamo inizio a questa cerimonia. Welcome, welcome to everyone. Today we will confer the Laurea Magistrale Honoris Causa in 
mathematics, or mathematical science, to Dr. Jorge Moreno. The computer scientist of the Argonne National Laboratory is one of the most important center, research centers at the global level. So I welcome you. I welcome all the people here and connected online. Professor Toraldo will then give the Laudatio Academica. Today we confer the laurea to one of the scientists, the most important scientists working on uh, numerical optimization, that part of mathem math mathematics, applied mathematics, that the care of problems concerning minimum and maximum, and study theory and methods to research the points of maximum and minimum in a mathematical function. He has made a, he has put together a scientific production that includes some of the milestones in this, in this sector. His research is uh, specifically developed on the analysis and development of particular numerical algorithms, the development of softwares, and the development of uh, system internet based for the solution online remote solution of problems of mathematical optimization the study of professor moore more have implication interdisciplinary implication because problems of minimum and maximum are of fundamental importance to address and solve for instance, problems of configuration of energy, or minimal energy in molecular biology, the maximum flux in a net, in determining, for instance, the financial financing portfolio in order to maximize the profit, data mining, and so on. So there are many fields where the, the, uh, the, uh, the accomplishment of Professor Moret could uh, Will be they are being applied. We're talking about problems that involve a very high number of variables, even millions, that are typically non-linear. This uh, field of science has passed through a real revolution uh, with new algorithms that have widely enlarge the range of issues that could be addressed, both for dimension, for size, and for characteristics. Basically, what's happening that today we have the figure of a computational mathematician, or a medical mathematician, that put together is a combination of the traditional mathematician with the computer scientist. And this new figure, this new role, it's what is strongly motivated to work in interdisciplinary field. So this revolution, Dr. Moret has provided a fundamental contribution with elegant the theoretical analysis that became fundamental in terms of impact on future development of this field. Those results at the base of uh, algorithms that are being evolved and they today are used, as I was saying, in many different fields. He's been, he is a, today a research scientist in a laboratory of the Department of Energy of the United States. Dr. Moray, because of this, has also been very much interested in uh, application. He also provide a, he also has, has developed a role in the computational analysis, in uh, development of software libraries uh, that create software environment which are integrated with optimization. Some study like the one conducted by Professor Dr. Murray, uh, we have application today like NEOS, Network Enable Optimization Systems. They are available online with, 
with many, many interfaces that every day, for instance, process thousands of job applications provided by researchers all to the world. If someone has to solve uh, problems that require also optimization, you can find in NEOS the hardware resources and the software resources that he needs. Today, a user can utilize the software from other sources on his own machine. But with NEOS, the users utilize for his problems uh, softwares from a wide range of softwares available that includes codecs from different, from different uh, sources that dynamically evolve and, uh, I would say, and, uh, and develop itself in a, system, in, a, in a system that is available online and that is available for many, many uh, uh, research laboratory and application. For instance, from a laptop, you can use NEOS to solve problems that would require computing resources that are much, of many order of magnitude bigger than what you have on your laptop. Certainly, Dr. Moore, his collaborator, has been a pioneer in this sort of symbiotic uh, activity interaction between mathematics, applications, com computing resources, which, is, uh, which are the base of uh, a modern uh, mathematician numeric mathematician. So at the end, we are talking about a scientific contribution that I believe have reinforced the basic role of mathematics and mathematical science in the so many applications that today we use without even knowing, without even realizing what is behind that, uh, with the research activity that, again, directly or indirectly, it's making our life easier richer and especially uh, easier to uh, make it easier our interaction through, through the net. And this is an important acquirement, is an important teaching, I would say, for the academy, but also especially for our students and for the students all over the world. And for this, we are very thankful to Dr. Moray for his contribution. So thank you very much for being here today. We honor it that you accepted this uh, recognition and I pass the word to Professor Cristina Trombetti, the Director of the Department of Mathematics, which will introduce the candidate. Thank you. Welcome to everybody. It's a great honor for me to celebrate today, Professor Gheorghe More. And I bring also greetings from the Department Department of Mathematics and, applic and Application that I have the honor to represent. Uh, Gheorghe Moret is certainly one of the most important figures in the field of numerical optimization, and his scientific production includes some of the cornerstone of the sector. He received his PhD in Applied Mathematics from the University of Maryland in 1970 with a thesis on a class of nonlinear functions and the convergence of Gauss-Seidel and Newton-Gauss-Seidel interaction under the prestigious supervision of James Ortega and the Werner Rainbow. He was assistant professor at Cornell University until 1975, and then he joined the Argonne National Laboratory. His research has mainly developed in analysis of quasi-Newton and trust region methods. Since 1970, the numerical optimization sector has undergone a real revolution in the field of nonlinear problems with new algorithms then that have enormously expanded the spectrum of issues. In this revolution, Jorge Moret has provided fundamental contribution with elegant theoretical analysis. And uh, he, his research was mainly focused on quasi-Newton methods, and quasi-Newton methods represented the overcoming of the classical Newton method, in the develop and in the development of these methods, he gave important contribution. Then he was interested in trust region methods, where he was among the forerunners in the design and analysis of trust region methods, 
for the globalization of nonlinear least square squares algorithms and the minimization of nonlinear functions. Then he also was interested in the gradient projection methods where he uh, was interested in constrained problems for the classical gradient projection methods and then he analyzes, analyzed and implemented several tools. In particular, he used tools of convex analysis for uh, uh, obtain extremely original and, and interesting results. For, in, for instance, I can cite the paper by Moray and Burke. Then, uh, he, uh, I can say that uh, Jorge Moray is certainly one of the leading numerical software experts. Indeed, his activity was aimed at the design and the implementation of extremely efficient, efficient libraries like NAUS. He was awarded of the Bale Orchard Ace Prize in 2002 for excellence in computational optimization with the following motivation. The NAUS server has had a tremendous impact in field of optimization extending the reach of a wide selection of fundamental algorithms to a growing number of new applications area. The influence of NEOS is such that in many applied fields, NEOS surveys are synonymous with optimization. Finally, you, Professor Moret, from a methodological point of view, is also recorded with the, the paper with the Dolan, designed, which designed the standard algorithm evaluation metric based in the so-called performance profiles. I think I can stop here and give Professor Tera. Thank you. Now we have the Laudatio Academica by Professor Toraldo. Rich, please. Everybody, can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Magnifico Rettore, dear colleagues, it is a great honor and pleasure for me to deliver the laudatio for Jorge Jesus Mori on the occasion of his Laurea Honoris Causa in Mathematics awarded by the University of Naples Federico II. I'm pleased, not just because of the prestige and the authoritativeness of Jorge, but also because of my scientific and personal relationship with him and my emotional connection with the University of Naples Federico II, where I spent 30 years of my life. The task of describing the merits of such a researcher as George Moret is undoubtedly very hard, although I am extremely grateful these scientific achievements are so many, and they have had such a tremendous impact on the field of numerical optimization that my presentation clearly cannot be exhaustive. Jorge was born in Havana, Cuba, on May 16, 1944, and emigrated to the United States in 1960. He completed his postgraduate studies at Georgia Institute of Technology, Georgia Tech, where he obtained a master's degree in applied mathematics in 1968. 
At the University of Maryland, he received his PhD in applied mathematics with James Ortega and Werner Reibold as advisors with the thesis on a class of nonlinear functions and the convergence of Gauss-Seidel and Newton Gauss-Seidel iterations. He started his career as assistant professor at Cornell in 1970, then became a senior researcher fellow at the University of Cambridge, and after that he became a computer scientist at the Mathematics and Computer Science Division at Argonne National Lab, where he has spent most of his career. His extraordinary work has earned him, among other honors, his nomination as fellow of the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, SOSAM, and the Bill Orchard Ace Prize for Excellence in Computational Optimization. He is also a, an Argonne Distinguished Fellow, which is the highest scientific ranking offered at the lab as a recognition of exceptional scientific contributions. The outstanding scientific curriculum of George Murray includes more than 100 papers with more than 30,000 citations, with an H index, which is 58, and 28 papers have more than 200 citations. However, all of these things are just a part of these many scientific merits. His research activity can be seen within the framework of the modern numerical optimization, and more generally, of numerical analysis. Nevertheless, it would be an understatement just to say that Jorge worked in the development of algorithms and software for larger scale optimization. Rather than trying to give a summary of Jorge Moreira results, which would go behind our uh, time limits, I will concentrate on just a few of them in order to highlight his attitude toward research, which has kept him interested in exploring new ways of tackling problems with a sharp focus on the applicability of the scientific results. I will start with the seminal work of George with John Dennis, uh, Charles Broydon on quasi-Newton methods, and uh, I need just a few words to outline, to frame this problem. Uh, newton raphson methods are, are the most famous method, methods for solving algebraic equations. And uh, the original uh, algorithm dates back to the second half of the 17th century in its very primitive version, and was initially derived as pure algebraic. Very soon, the connection with the nascent calculus, namely computing the tangent line approximation to a curve, was clear and made it possible to naturally extend the method to the solution of systems of algebraic equations and minimization of n variables functions. Indeed, the concept of the derivatives plays a key role in Newton Raphson method. Roots finding approaches, which date back to the ancient Egypt, before calculus can just seen as a naive approximation of a version of Newton algorithm. So it may appear strange or contradictory at the first. The many efforts in the 1960s devoted to designing a version of the method without derivatives. The reason was that in many applications leading to the solution systems of algebraic equations, the number of variables was very large and the computation of the Jacobian matrix, which means the matrix of derivatives, was very costly or even impossible. And this was a key issue in the effective implementation on Newton's method in order to fully exploit the potential of the up and coming computational infrastructures. The goal was to mimic Newton's method without derivative. The first quasi Newton algorithm was proposed by William Davidon. A thesis working, this is not the case, a case, at Argonne National Lab in 1959. But much later, Charles Broyden, working on a nonlinear model of nuclear power unit, came up with two approximate formulas for the Jacobian matrix, the famous Broyden's rules, 
And more or less at the same time, Roger Fletcher, Mike Powell, Donald Coldfarb, and David Shannon made similar discoveries. Quoting uh, Andreas Kriwank in uh, a very nice paper that he wrote on the historical development of quasi Newton methods, he says, Reducing the linear algebra effort in the process looks more like an engineering trick than an algorithmic device of mathematical interest. And such was considered at the beginning. However, a rigorous analysis of quasi Newton methods has seen tremendous advances in the early 70s, showing that the beautiful mathematics underlies the apparently surprising behavior of quasi Newton methods. In this process, some papers by George Moray, with Charles Broyden, and John Dennis are milestone in the numerical optimization literature. Quoting again Andreas Griewank, who talks about Charles Broyden and his fellow that he called Quasi Newton Musketeers. After a few years and in close collaboration with his co authors, John Dennis and George Moray, a beautiful theory of superlinear convergence emerged, which was later built upon by other researchers and extended to many update formulas. In particular, George Moray, this change characterization of Broyden matrix with respect to the Frobenius norm leading to the proof of superlinear convergence is considered a key result in the quasi Newton method theory. At this point, although, I mean, it may seem strange and singular, rather than working again on quasi Newton methods, uh, George Moray decided to move to an apparently different topic, the trust region methods. Once again, the decision was motivated by the desire to work on a key issue on numerical optimization with a strong impact on practical applicability. The issue was the design of general strategies to get algorithms globally convergent, uh, which means in, in which the convergence is guaranteed with an arbitrary initial point. And you can understand how important is such an issue with respect to, uh, to the application and to the implementation. Once again, a beautiful theory was stated, and in particular, the papers, the levenberg markard algorithm implementation theory by, uh, by Moray, and uh, um, a paper with uh, uh, Dennis Sorensen, which was computing a trust region step, which follow uh, over a few years the previous paper, are cornerstones of the topic. Once again, effective implementation solution were strongly related to a deep theoretical analysis. I won't go too much in details in, in the algorithm because that would take probably too long. So I want to say a few things about what George Moray called synergistic activities. Synergistics, uh, I mean, I went on uh, Oxford Dictionary and says synergistic is related to the interaction or cooperation of two or more agents to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effect. That could be, uh, say, a nice definition of science and uh, of making science. In this case, the agents are the mathematician, the computer scientist, the end users. That is, scientists and not only scientists in a wide variety of areas. The applicability of the mathematical result is the main focus of these activities. The Applied Mathematics Division at Argonne, starting in the late 70s of last century, was strongly involved in the design of numerical libraries, namely the LIMPAC and the MIMPAC libraries, which were not just a collection of numerical codes. In this process, George Moray has been a pioneer as leader of the MIMPAC project. Just a few words about these products. MIMPAC is a package for the numerical solution of system of nonlinear equation and nonlinear least squares problem. It's a research effort whose goal is the development of a systematized collection of quality optimization software. The goal of the, the package is reliability, is to use transportability. This comes from the documentation of, the, of this software. And what uh, is reliability. How is connect, connected with the, the previous activity, or what I described before? Well, reliability derives from the underlying algorithms, having a sound theoretical basis, which, for instance, guarantee global convergence and scale invariance. This is what reliability means at the algorithmic level, but there is also a software level. 
Morea's pioneered this new way of thinking about extensive and numerical testing of a software through rigorous standard procedure. The impact comes with a large collection of test problems on which the performance of the software had been measured on a huge number of computing systems available at that time. After 20 years, somewhat along the same, line, the same lines, in the name of methodological rigor, in providing objective information when benchmarking algorithms, uh, uh, Elizabeth Dolan with uh, Moray came up with the design of the well-known performance profiles procedure that since then has become a standard way to compare algorithms. As evidence of this, as of September 2021, there are more than 4,000 citations of that paper. This steady capacity in evolving and investing research brought George Moray to experiment with the new ideas and challenges created by technological developments. An example of this is the NEOS server, which introduces a completely new approach in solving optimization problems based on computational servers and collaborative technologies. NEOS server is a free internet-based service for solving numerical optimization problems. Hosted by the Wisconsin Institute for Discovery at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, the NEOS server provides access to more than 60 state-of-the-art solvers in more than a dozen optimization categories. Solvers hosted by the University of Wisconsin in Madison run now on distributed high-performance machine enabled by the HT Condor software. Remote solver run on machine at Arizona State University, the University of Klagenfurt in Austria, the University of Migno in Portugal. Use this NEOS, but you don't know where your problem is going to be solved. And the quoting from the uh, the Bill Orchard Ace Prize uh, for Excellence in Computation Optimization. Uh, the quote is The NEO server has had a tremendous impact in the field of optimization, extending the reach of a wide selection of fundamental algorithms to a growing number of new applications area. The influence of NEOS in such in many application fields. The NEO server is synonymous with optimization. The project, started in 1998, is continuously evolving. Today, NEOS is equipped with an online guide, several interfaces, and about 4,000 jobs are submitted every day to the server. As further evolution in this activity, TAO, the toolkit for advanced optimization, was the first toolkit for solving large-scale optimization problems on high-performance distributed architecture ranging from high-end workstation to high-performance clusters. The main design goals were portability, performance, scalable parallelism, and an interface independent of the architecture. Our solvers have been used to solve computational science problems in a wide variety of areas, and is now included in the PETS distribution. In sum, what strikes me in George is his intellectual honesty, his rigor, the depth of his scientific results, which have never been banal, never repetitive, and always presented with extreme clarity. And before concluding, in addition to his scientific attitude, I'm pleased to recall the way in which he deals with all the people he works with. He's exceptionally generous with his time and attention. He likes to share ideas and intuitions, and it doesn't matter if you are a PhD student or a famous scientist. Those who have had the privilege to collaborate with him have experienced this friendly manner and this capacity to keep the atmosphere relaxed, especially with this lovely sense of humor. This award is a recognition of the many contributions made by George Moray to the advancement of the numerical optimization, but also in recognition of the way numerical analysis should be done, keeping in mind the applicability of the results without forgetting the methodological rigor. With this, I praise the rector and the colleagues of the Department of Mathematics and Application Renato Cacciopoli for the decision that welcomes George Moray in the University of Naples, of, uh, uh, Naples Federico II. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Professor Toraldo. So now we have heard the merits of our candidates today, his achievements, also the motivation for uh, assigning this title and this, uh, this award. So now is the time for Professor Jorge More to provide his uh, contribution, his lecture magistralis, please. Very much for everybody coming here. I'm deeply honored by the honor of this and I also thank Professor Polizzi, Professor Polvetti, and Professor and Professor Dora. I have to speak closer. Professor Lurito, Trombetti, and Toraldo for the kind words that they said about my work. Uh, now I would like to uh, tell you a little bit about the research that I have done over the years. Uh, I will try not to be too technical and just try to give you a sense of the kind of influences and developments that I have made. It will be a very general discussion, and I hope it will be accessible to all of you here. I understand that there are many, well, the whole university is represented here, so I hope I will not leave too many people behind. better. Does it work now? Yes, it works very well. Thank you. Uh, so this first slide essentially summarizes everything that gives a view of the things that I've done over the years. Uh, everything is covered under analysis, algorithms, software, and applications. The analysis and the algorithms are very much mathematically oriented. This is real mathematics research. The software, of course, is, moves into the area of computer science. And applications that entails uh, communication and interactions with physical scientists. So my work started at Cornell University in 1970. I was there for five years. And at that time, I worked on quasi-Newton methods. Uh, to give you an idea about what happened in Quasi-Newton method, even though uh, Gerardo already told you about that, they had been proposed a few years earlier in 1969 by a physicist at Argonne National Laboratory, the place where I work. Uh, but his description was very uh, non-intuitive, so it was not picked up until uh, Fletcher and Powell uh, picked it up and gave it a new formulation that was much more understandable to com computational scientists. Uh, now, around uh, 1975, uh, that's when things really got started going. Uh, methods of Boyden, Goldfarb, and Shannon were introduced at that time, and Descriptions did not involve a proof of convergence. In other words, methods were shown to work on applications, but there was no proof, no mathematical proof of convergence. And that's one of the first things that I did in connection with John Dennis and Charles Broyden. We proved that the methods converge locally. So that was very reassuring. Uh, after my years at Cornell University, then I went to Argonne National Laboratories because I was interested in the development of software. Now, uh, you have to understand that at least in 1975, software was mainly developed on punch cards. So you had this thick deck of punch cards, and that's how the algorithms were programmed. Okay? And in order to communicate a piece of software to another place, another university, for you have to ship all these cards to the other university, and then they would have to load them into their computers. It was 
was a very laborious process, but it worked. Not very fast, but it, it worked. But around 1975, then Unix operating system came into uh, to being. And that was a revolution, because all of a sudden we could use local computers for solving real problems. Okay? We didn't have to re rely on mainframe. And moreover, the internet came about around that time. So now, for the first time, we could communicate not only within universities or within research laboratories, but we could communicate with uh, colleagues ar around the world. So that was another huge development that changed the field. So I started working on developing software. Uh, at that time, mainly based on trust region methods. This was a new way of looking at optimization algorithms that require a somewhat complicated uh, solution for the next step in between uh, algorithms, but it was much more efficient overall. Uh, so in 1978, uh, I proposed a Levenberg-Markovic algorithm that incorporated these ideas, and that research became very popular. And in 1980, we, the first edition of MinPAC was released. At that time, we were still communicating between laboratories or between universities with magnetic tapes. I don't know how many of you remember magnetic tapes, but they're thick disks, maybe 12 inches in diameter, and you would send them by mail or express service in between the university, and then they would be loaded onto the computer. Uh, so the rest of my time there, or there in my slides, I've said 1975 to 2000 was still basic research. I was involved in basic research, so there was no need to show that our research was relevant to application. It was just pure. So this was very gratifying, but eventually that era came to an end because people at the Department of Energy decided that we needed to show that our work was relevant to solving uh, applications. So uh, that was what I'm calling the SIDAC era. SIDAC is still, even now, even today, a big program in the Department of Energy that seeks to connect applied mathematics, computer science, to application scientists in a variety of fields, biology, uh, nuclear energy, for example. Uh, and at that time, we increased our time uh, spent on the development of software, and we developed the uh, toolkit for advanced optimization that was designed to work on massively parallel architectures. And we also started working with scientists, in particular nuclear, nuclear energy scientists. And I will tell you a little bit of, about all of these things, but this is essentially a summary. And note at the bottom, just to give you a sense, of where the field stood at that time. You know, the, uh, the web, or the World Wide Web, was developed around that time. And the first browser, Mosaic, was developed at the University of Illinois. If I can see, well, I think it's, what's, what's the date there? 1980? 93, okay. So, next slide, please. Ah, perfect. So, as has been said already, the, uh, I, I first worked at the University of Maryland, getting my PhD, and there my advisors were James Ortega and Werner Reinbold. The dates in there uh, usually indicate uh, the date for one of the papers that I wrote with my advisors. I never wrote a paper with my uh, Jim Ortega. I tried to write it, but he said, no, this is mostly your work. You should write it on your own. And that's 
what I did. Uh, then from there, I moved to Cornell University from 1970 to 75, and there my collaborators were mainly Charles Bruin and John Dennis. Ah. Now, whenever you mention your collaborators, you're at a risk of leaving out some important collaborators, but these are what I feel were my most important collaborators over the years. They, they were all, with the exception of Bob Fuller, they were all at Argonne, or they spent some time at Argonne, and then they went up to different places. Danny Sorensen, for example, uh, went to Rice University. Tom Coleman went to Cornell University, Jim Berg, the University of Washington, and so forth. And of course, Gerardo is there, who is at the University of Naples. Chi and Lin is uh, now in Taiwan, National Taiwan University. So he's doing very well. Uh, Bob Fuller is the exception. I mean, I worked with him for many years, but he was at Northwestern University. Next slide, please. Ah, yes, so th this is supposed to be somewhat humorous, but this is the way life is in U.S. universities, and I suspect it's also the way life is at Italian universities. In order to survive, you need to publish unpublished, you do not get promoted, and bad things happen. Uh, but how is research rated? Research is usually rated by the number of citations. So these are references that other people make to your work. Okay, whenever somebody writes that, then Google, Google Scholar in particular, will note that and add it to your citations. One of the problems with citations, from my point of view, is that software doesn't get too many citations. People tend to use your software, but they do not tend to cite the original work. So, uh, as you will see, I believe on the next slide, you will see that software gets very few citations, and what tends to get citations are papers on journals. Slide, please. Yes. So, uh, Gerardo mentioned something about this. This is Google Scholar. These are some of my best cited papers. Uh, the first one was on trust region methods. This was in the early years, 1978, I believe. Uh, that's on trust region methods that was done at Argonne and has. Uh, up to now about 6,000 citations, which is done well. Uh, the other one that is on that list that is worthwhile uh, highlighting is the second one, benchmarking optimization with performance profile. This is a relatively recent work, but it has gathered a lot of publications, and I will tell you why later when we get to the uh, section on performance profile. Uh, MinPack one user guide, which presumably would be piece of site, uh, should be the proper citation for software. Relatively speaking, it's not getting a lot of citations, even though it is widely used. It's just human nature. People tend to use software, and they they think it's free, but there's no need to cite it. It's very difficult to get citations for software. Uh, and the NEOS server is also citations. Now, the NEOS server, as has been mentioned, it gets a lot of users. I think last year it got like 2 million job submissions. That's a lot. But people do not cite the NEOS server when they use it. They say thank you internally, and that's it. Uh, I will not, okay. Okay, this is slide on the NEO server. I think we have talked a lot about the NEO server, so maybe there's no need to spend too much time, but I want to highlight 
one issue of a delivery service. Namely, this was a long time in development. There was version one to five. But at a certain point, we had to stop developing because at least in the Department of Energy, the Department of Energy that funds me, you know, uh, they go on three-year cycles. You know, propose ideas, and during the next three years, develop them. And then they say, okay, what's the next great idea that you have? They're not interested in seeing previous ideas. They want to see current ideas. But we kept NEOs alive by going to other funding agencies, namely the National Science Foundation. But after a while, we needed to stop developing. So what do you do with a project that is very useful, it's used throughout the world, but all of a sudden you, you cannot stop supporting anymore? It's, it's a problem. Uh, fortunately, I was able to solve that problem by asking the University of Wisconsin to take over the NEOS server. And they were very happy to take it over. They have, uh, they, they took it over, and now they're doing extremely well. The two million users that I mentioned is users uh, for the past year. When it was being hosted at uh, Argonne, the number of users was like a tenth of that. So they have done very well. So the idea is important. It has had a big impact, but we had to stop it. Next slide, please. Okay, so now we're moving into the era where you have collaborations with physical scientists. Now, this is a different era. Okay? All of a sudden, you have to speak like people sitting here, physical scientists, people, people in biology, for example. Well, there's a serious issue of communication talk to them, and they would talk back to you, and we would have different languages, so we had to spend a lot of time just trying to find out what is it that each of us uh, knew. Uh, we knew about computer science, we knew about mathematics, they knew, of, for example, about physics. It was difficult. The, the challenges in there, as I uh, have in this slide, are... Uh, First of all, derivative-free methods. Before, we were working very much on methods that require derivatives. But for the applications of scientists, they could not provide derivatives, so we had to provide derivative-free methods. Also, their functions were very expensive to evaluate. to require minutes on a multi-process. Uh, okay, I already mentioned physical scientists as being an issue. And then the other issue that was very important is because they were interested in solving very large, expensive problems, we needed to use multiprocessors. We could not rely on laptops. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, so this somehow summarizes some of our work energy scientists uh, and this work has received a lot of attention in the nuclear engineering field okay it's in some ways a very simple problem you're fitting parameters in a model that ha happens to have 63 nuclei okay but each function evaluation requires a lot of time 12 minutes on 64 processors and it's at least square problem Nothing very fancy, it's just at least, you're just fitting data. That's all that there is to it. So the function I have written there, uh, it's just uh, a linear combination of uh, terms that are square. Each function, f sub k, represents a nuclei. Now, this line on the left is interesting for two reasons. First of all, we were comparing a standard method for derivative-free called the Nelder Mead method was one that we had developed. So the Nelder Mead method is in red. The 
one that we developed was in blue. Okay? And as you can see, the methane in blue achieves the minimum very fast. And it's hard to tell from that figure, but the improvements are massive, major. Moreover, the standard Nelder method doesn't get convergence, and when it does get doesn't get convergence fast, and when it does achieve convergence towards the end, it requires a lot of function evaluations. Function evaluations uh, translate into a lot of time on these massively parallel computers. Uh, and the question is, why are we better? Uh, it was not luck, but it was a, in some ways a simple observation. The simple observation was that the function that we're trying to minimize is the sum of squares, and that instead of having a model for the whole function, we had models for each sub-function. The Nelder mean method, the only thing it knew about was the function itself, f of x. You gave it some input, and you uh, got some values in return. Our method that we developed for that uh, required uh, knowing about each f sub k. Given that information, then you could model each f sub k and, there, and that way model the whole function. So uh, I think that's all I want to say about this slide. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to at least mention briefly performance profiles. Performance profiles uh, was developed in order to solve a particular problem, i.e., how do you compare the performance of solvers or algorithms on a set of problems? Okay? In order for you to uh, show that your algorithm is good, the standard method is for you to run your problem on a set of problems. That's what I call benchmark problems. And then compare your results with other algorithms. Maybe one, maybe several algorithms. So in order to do that, the results would be presented in tables. One table presented for each algorithm. And uh, that would consume, well, there were several problems with that. One is, would consume a lot of pages on your publication. But the main problem was that it was very hard to describe the results. You would have to flip in between pages, and it was difficult. So we came up with this method to, uh, to compare algorithms based upon just one graph. That's all. Uh, and in order to describe that, you would determine the fraction of problems where the performance, the ratio of times, exceeded a certain ratio, bigger than one. So for each algorithm, you would, you would decide, OK, this algorithm, how much better is it than another algorithm? 20%, 30%, and that would be the performance ratio. So the fastest solver would, would have a ratio of 1. If the solver failed, would have a ratio of, a thousand, of infinite, an infinite ratio. And of course, there would be a, a lot of room in between. And the performance profile is just the distribution function of this metric. Distribution functions are well known in statistics or probability. And you would have, then you would plot this distribution function that you could see on the next slide. There. OK, so here is just one example with four solvers. So uh, there you have a solver in blue. Well, you have four solvers with four different colors, red, blue, green, and what shall we call it? Violet. The, the violet, just from looking at the left-hand side graph, you can see immediately that the violet solver is the fastest on 60% of the problems, while the blue solver is the fastest on 40% of the problems, roughly. And the other two solvers are not very good with Definitely less than 10%, uh, being, the, being the 
passes on less than 10% of the problems. On the right-hand side, you can see uh, the percentage of problems that each algorithm solves. So you see that uh, the pilot solver solves roughly, what, uh, I would say around 90% of the problems. So in here, the solver that is on top is the best solver, but sometimes there's these crossover points, and, and those are worthwhile to note. But what you hope is that there's always a solver on the top. If there's a lot of crossing in between these solvers, then you come to the conclusion that no solver is best overall. Maybe the, not the conclusion that you wanted, but it's what the data shows. Uh, and this simple idea. Uh, became very popular, and that's why that particular paper with uh, this Dolan became so popular. And it still continues to be used today in other fields. I mean, and you can look that up. Okay, uh, now for the last slide. Yeah, so, one thing that I want, that I want to emphasize in my discussion is that I've been very fortunate very lucky to work with talented colleagues. So I believe this is true of researchers overall, that you have to somehow associate yourself with good researchers. Hopefully, and this is what I tried to aim when I got to Argonne National Laboratory and started hiring people, I would always try to hire people that were smarter than I was because that's the kind of people that I wanted to associate myself with. Uh, the, the other thing that I would like to emphasize is that Google Scholar is actually a very nice way of evaluating work. It's not perfect. There is no perfect evaluation of the method of your research, but it's a good method. It's an indication. I've used it many times in um, evaluating other people. And I'm sure other people use that metric in order to evaluate my work. Uh, OK, and the last item is Italy. Italy is truly a wonderful country. I was born in Cuba, and somehow, whenever I come here, just this Latin aspect of Italy is just endearing. I love it. I've visited many cities. Well, I've visited many places in Italy. Maybe not enough. Those are some of the cities I've uh, visited, usually in connection with conferences. Your conferences are wonderful. Erice, for example, yes, a wonderful conference center. So whatever you're doing, you're doing very well. And I'm very grateful that I was able to be part of Italian research life. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much. We now have the moment of the official declaration. We'll do in both languages, Italian and English. In nome della legge della Repubblica Italiana, in the name of law of the Italian Republic, noi, Professore Matteo Lorito, Rettore del Messiaio degli Studi di Napoli, Federico II, qui Professor Matteo Lorito, Rector of the University of Naples, Federico II, Today, oggi, 15 ottobre 2021, ottobre 15, 2021, conferiamo la laurea magistrale honoris causa in matematica al dottor Jorge Moret. We confer our 
laurea magistrale honoris causa in mathematics to Dr. Jorge Moretti. Congratulations.